Hello and welcome to the Skyrim Romance 3.0 installation tutorial. But before we get into it, I've got to get real with you for a second. Have you slaughtered every bandit? Purchased every house? Have you donned that good old amulet Amara? Went to go hunt yourself down a man and found yourself disappointed? You may have headed to the Nexus in search of an interesting, marriageable, complex follower, but discovered they're all hot babes. Six years of Skyrim modding, and there's not a single comprehensive, marriageable male follower. Well, as it turns out, you came to the right place. That obvious? <laughs> I hope just because we're married now doesn't mean I've taken all the fire out of you. I mean, all that adventuring, all those fights. One day, are we just going to sit down at the fire and say, that's enough? Will the event of the week become visiting all the inns before it gets dark? I may fear for your life, but I want to keep that. I want to be reminded each time a blade gets too close to your heart how fiercely I love you. New and improved with lots of added content, the latest version of Skyrim Romance adds not only a smartass ranger to woo you, but adds a variety of attractive men all with different personalities and interactions. Finally, not only will you be acknowledged as the powerful dragonborn, but also as a desirable woman. As mentioned, this video will be an in-depth guide on installing Skyrim Romance 3.0, as well as its prerequisite mods. We're going to be starting from the basics, so if you just need the mod list, or want to skip ahead to a future part of this video, you can do so using links in the description down below. Part 1. What is a mod? And what's a mod manager? First off, I gotta ask, where have you been all this time? Nah, I'm just kidding. Welcome to the magical world of modding. I, for one, am super excited that you're starting out your adventure with Skyrim Romance. A mod is an unofficial add-on that makes some kind of change to Skyrim. Adding buildings, fixing bugs, changing textures, just about anything you could want to do. A manager is a program that helps a user install, organize, turn mods on and off, and keep them from conflicting with each other and crashing the game. Two main options for managers would be Nexus Mod Manager or Mod Organizer. As much as I'd love to sit here and rant on both of these, another YouTuber and modder, Gopher, has covered both of these programs incredibly well. Whether you're a straight-up beginner or ready to step up your game, Please check out Gopher's channel, he's an amazing resource. If you haven't started using a mod manager up until this point, we do not recommend installing these mods manually. It's likely high time you tried out a manager. So here's a brief rundown of your options. Nexus Mod Manager is the most common and basic option. It's provided by the Nexus, the main site for mods, and it's really straightforward to use. If you're not intending on getting many mods, or you're just starting out, you'll likely want to go with this option. Mod Organizer is made by a modder and is definitely used by them. It's far more advanced in its options for installing and editing your mod settings. If you're currently having trouble on getting your existing mods to work on Nexus Mod Manager, or you'd like to learn more about modding, it may be time to switch. And seriously, go watch Gopher's tutorial. Part 2. What do I need to play Skyrim Romance 3.0? And how do I install it? Alright. What we're all here for. I'm going to put up a list of mods you'll be needing on screen right now. All of these sites will need you to make some kind of account to download the mods. Feel free to pause the video here, download them, and then we'll continue. Don't go installing them all willy-nilly, there's a process. And trust me on this, okay? I'll just, I'll just wait here. Alone. Okay, fun part. Time to install. We're going to be installing these in a certain order, which is also going to be your load order. What's a load order, you say? Well, you clearly didn't watch all of Gopher's tutorial videos I linked you to, like, 45 seconds ago, so here's a link to his explanation on that. First off, we're going to install Skyrim Script Extender, or SKSE. There's a Steam version, an installer, and a zip version available for download. 
we'd recommend using the zipped version because you can install it using your manager, which ultimately gives you more control over your mods and how they work. No matter what you choose, you're going to need to go to your Skyrim folder, find skse underscore loader, and make a shortcut of it on your desktop. You're going to be using this shortcut to open Skyrim from now on, or else all the mods depending on SKSE to work won't. If you've chosen the Steam option, SKSE will appear in your games library, and you'll be using that to play from now on for the same reason. And just to clarify, you only need one of these versions. Next is SkyEY, and if you aren't already using this, I don't know how you've survived. This one's a super easy install, no surprises. Just follow your manager's instructions. Number three is Realistic Rag Dolls with Force. If you don't have a preference, the realistic version is likely the one you'll want to go with. Next, we have our first option. You'll need either Enhanced Character Edit and Net Immerse Override, or Race Menu. If you don't have a preference or you're not using any of these mods, just go with Race Menu. It does the job of the first two. All right, here's something a bit more complicated. Finis. I'm going to give you a simplified version of Finis' installation guide from the Nexus page. Download Finis behavior files and install normally using your manager. If you happen to be using Nexus Mod Manager, always select No when prompted to upgrade. Next, we're going to need to find Generate Finis for Users.exe. The process for finding this file in your Skyrim folder is going to differ a little bit depending on which mod manager you've used to install it, so I'm going to put up both paths on screen right now. Once you've found this file, you're going to make a shortcut for it on your desktop. Now, once everything's all installed, we're going to need to run this, and I'm going to give you a rundown on how that works later on, so stay tuned. Now it's time for XP32. If you've installed all of the previously mentioned mods in the order presented, you shouldn't have any problems with the prerequisite mods for this one. Also, part of the reason we've gone in this order is to prevent any mods from overwriting this one. In relation to that, after installing this, say no to any future mod you install if it asks to overwrite your skeleton. If you want more information on this, you can go to XP32's Nexus page for more answers. Another note, XP32 is also incompatible with a couple of mods, and I'm going to put a list of those on screen now. We've come to our next option. You're going to need either Diamondized UNP Female Body or Caliente's Beautiful Body Edition. Now, this is just a choice of preference. Each of these female bodies have a different aesthetic to them. But either way, you're going to want a new body mod to take advantage of Skyrim Romance's more intimate animations later on. Yet another option of preference, you're going to need either Schlongs of Skyrim or Shape Atlas for Men. Now this isn't just a nude male model, it's uh, an animated penis mod. And again, you're going to be needing this for the more intimate animations in Skyrim Romance. Schlongs of Skyrim, aside from being one of the most fun mods you can say, is the more popular option. Because of this, it has more options for support if you encounter any trouble, and it's also pretty straightforward to install with several options for body hair and, uh, sizing. Shape Atlas for Men is pretty fun because it uses the weights of NPCs to change the build of their bodies, so all the men in your game look fairly diverse. Just a note, and maybe this is just me, and maybe this will change, but the website for this and the installation of this mod was fairly difficult to understand. While I do really enjoy this mod, and I am currently using it, it may be easier to go with Schlongs of Skyrim if you're looking for the most straightforward option. There'll be a link in the description down below for Shape Atlas for Men's FAQ page if you'd like to give it a shot. Sex Lab is next, and you're going to need an account for the 18 and up site Lovers Lab in order to download it. In case if you haven't guessed, Sex Lab is in charge of all of the adult animations in Skyrim Romance. Using your mod manager should make installation pretty simple, and Lovers Lab is a really easy site to navigate. But this mod does require a second process to enable it while playing Skyrim. 
so stay tuned for the next section of this video, and I'll show you how that works. Alright, that's everything. Now you can go ahead and install Skyrim Romance 3.0. Go ahead and use your manager. Should be pretty easy. But we're not quite ready to play yet. Now that everything is installed correctly and in the right order, there's still a couple of things we have to do before and after we open up Skyrim to make sure everything works. Let's start by setting up Finis. If you followed the guide, you should have a shortcut on your desktop to run Finis. Go ahead and do that now. A window will appear that looks something like this. Before we run it, we're going to make sure we have Skeleton Arm Fix checked. If you know you're running any other mods that need the optional patches, go ahead and check them now. If you don't or you're not sure, it's best to leave the rest unchecked. Go ahead and click the big Update Finish Behavior button and let it run. It might take a minute or two, but after this, you're all ready to go. Now, if something went wrong in this step... Oh. Oh, you'll know. It's time to open up Skyrim using SKSE and set up SexLab. Now when you get in game, you might see some different text appear in the top left hand corner of the screen. Some mods will do this when they're initially installed and enabled. Next, you're going to want to hit the escape button and take a look for the mod configuration section. If you haven't installed SkyUI before, this will be a new option. Select SexLab. Select install from the left side of the menu that appears. You'll notice the dialog on the middle and the right side of the window will change, and a prompt to Install or Update Sex Lab will appear on the right. Click it and close out the menu and return to the game. You'll see several messages appear in the top left side of the screen as Sex Lab sets up. You'll know when it's finished when you see a message that appears saying, Ready! And that's it! Sex Lab is installed! After this process is complete, a bunch more options for SexLab will appear in the mod configuration menu, so you might want to check that out in your free time. With all that aside, you're ready to experience everything that Skyrim Romance 3.0 has to offer. If you're experiencing any problems and you're not sure where to start, I'd like to suggest another video from Gopher's modding tutorial playlist. Beyond that, you can always contact us on SkyrimRomance.com. And even if you aren't experiencing problems, which we hope you aren't, it's definitely worth a visit for the blog posts, tutorials, thriving community, and of course, more information on future romance-related projects for Skyrim. A lot of talented people's time and effort went into making this project a reality, and we all hope that you enjoy it as much as everyone enjoyed making it. You can subscribe to keep up to date with Skyrim Romance 3.0 and all future projects, and feel free to comment down below with any questions or suggestions.